All right, it's Jonathan here, and I want to talk about uh, bench vices, and in particular, uh, swivel vice. Um, any any uh, home workshop is incomplete without a bench vice, and uh, there's a lot of different vices out there, and you don't have to spend a pile of money to get a good vice, but I'm going to review the two that I have, and I'm going to go down to one, because uh, the one that I, I just installed today uh, is much more versatile, it's much more functional, it can do more, and I don't need both. So um, I'm going to show you the one that I've been using for the last 10 years, um, probably more, probably more like 15 years. I got it as a, I think a Christmas gift for my father-in-law many years ago, and it was used when I got it, and they never, they never depreciate, they never wear out. So I'm just going to flip the camera around here. So this is the vice I've been using for the last 10 or 15 years, and it's um, pretty standard and basically a, a full functional device it, or vice. It's got the, the swivel base and it's a it's a four inch jaw, nice sturdy handle and um, you know it's well built and it is a uh, I don't even know if it's any fancy brand it's I don't think it's an Irwin or a record or anything like that because they always stamp theirs into the casting but it's been true and what's really important is this piece under here is, is extended out a long way. That gives the vise a lot of lateral support underneath. And this is the piece that breaks when people clamp something in here really, really tight and then they sledgehammer on it. So um, you want a big bulky casting right down here. It's got the anvil on the back, which is great if you need to pound on something. And of course, um, it's got the lock-in mechanism here. Now all of that's fine. But um, there's a few things on the new vise that I like better. And first I'm going to show you on the old vise what I, what I had before. So on the old vise, these two locking mechanisms tighten up this square nut against the casting and you can see they have a certain amount of travel. It wouldn't even be 180 degrees, it would probably be about 120 degrees. So when you swivel this vise, it'll come to a stop right there and right there. So in the end, it's probably only a little over 90 degrees. So that's, that's fine in many circumstances, but sometimes it would be nice to just swivel all the way around. The other thing that I'm limited here is this jaw always faces parallel to the floor. I cannot do anything about that. It's just fixed. And there's times when I would like my workpiece horizontal turned vertical. So let's say, for example, I wanted to work on something like this. Well, as you can see, if I clamp it this way, it's got a fair, fairly small cross-section of bearing surface. Pretty hard to tighten it up enough to hold it really steady. So if I'm cutting on here, it's going to want to turn and move. If I tighten it enough not to move, I'm probably going to crush something. So, sometimes it would be nice to be able to rotate this jaw. Well, I've been looking for over a year for a swivel vise, a pivoting swivel vise, and I finally found it. So I'm just going to give you, give you a quick overview of the benefits. So as you can see, it's already swiveled into the 90 degree position. I'm going to swivel it back, and I'm already kind of giving away my thunder here. Oh, and you can only swivel it after you've released the jaws. So we're going to go back to the vertical position. So now. It's basically the same thing as the other vise. So, you know, this one is stuck on this vertical position, this, or sorry, horizontal position. That's what I have here now. So, that's the standard position. But, here's a couple of key things that are different. If you unlock the base, this can swivel full 360 degrees. I really like that. Obviously, there's benefits to that. Right off the top of my head, I don't have an example, but clearly, to be able to pivot 360 degrees gives you more functionality than 90 degrees. So that's, that's one thing. What allows us to do that is there's an independent ring inside of here that travels in a groove inside here, and it can be locked in any position. So now it's locked, and there's another locking mechanism on the other side. So 360 degrees. This is what I've been looking for for over a year. If you pull this spring-loaded pin out, there are detents. Every however many degrees that's going to be, there's 
second position, there's third. So that's 90 degrees. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that every 30 degrees, there's 30, there's 60, and there's 90, and you can keep on going all the way around the horn, um, we have 360 degrees of swivel. Fantastic. Now let me show you why I love this. Not to mention, before I go further, you can see that there's two sets of jaws. There's your standard square jaws, and I might add, these jaws are in very, very nice shape. They've got Allen head screws holding the jaw plates in, which is what I like. And they're not chipped, they're not worn. Like this vise has seen very little use. Uh, this is a high quality vise. I think it's European, possibly German, but I don't see any markings on it. And I'm gonna keep looking, I might've missed something. Love the jaws and they come together nice and true. And this is one of the things I look for in a vise. I want the jaws to come together nice and true and square. So now you can hardly feel the lip on top. Not so much a port and side to side, but up and down. And they come together tight all the way across this entire surface. As you can see, very, very even. So that's what I'm looking for. And then when you look at this way, you can see that very, very even across the top this way. All right. But any old vice could be like this. Here's what I love about this. All right, so let's say I've got a round object that I want to clamp. Here to my little round pipe. There it is, okay? So let's say I want to clamp this in here. And, and I really want to work on this piece. It's hard to get it tight. It's gonna to want to pivot on me. What I love about this vice is it has the pipe jaws. So I'm actually going to, just for the camera angle, I'm going to rotate this tool about there, all right? What I absolutely love about this vise is my pipe jaws, all right? Now I have a positive lock this way, I have a clamp this way, and I have a clamp this way. Now it cannot move, it cannot turn this way, it cannot pivot or swivel in any direction. It is locked down. Now I can swivel this to a full 90 degrees. Of course you can't do it when it's locked. And I'm going to explain that in a second. But now I can work on something vertically and I am, I'm a big guy and I'm reefing on this hard. At least 100 pounds of force and it's not going anywhere. So, but I'm going to show you one other thing I like about these pipe jaws. This is square stock. Clearly you can see when you look at the pipe jaws, it's not a round pipe jaw, it's got a serration in it. So it can grab square stock anywhere. So you can put it in here like this and it's gonna hold it tight. You can rotate it a bit and it's gonna hold it tight there. It doesn't even have to be square in the jaws in any position you want it at, anywhere, all the way out to totally flat. It can hold it in any position and I absolutely Love that. So you can rotate right to the top. And now there's one more feature that I really like about this. It's got another set of jaws on the top. So if you want to put the butt end of something in here, now just bear with me one second. As you can see, they're not very deep, probably only about three eighths of an inch, but I can lock something in this way as, as well. Now this is gonna be more, it's not so much clamp really tight like a really, really powerful vise. It's more, now it's a workpiece holder. But that is super handy. So there's actually three different sets of jaws on this, on this vise. Now I was gonna explain why you have to release the jaws in order to pivot. Well, this is actually a real benefit to the vise. You might be thinking, well, it should be nice if you could rotate it when you've got something in the jaws. And you're absolutely right. There's times where that would be nice. Um, and, and I guess to a small degree, you can't. But if you've got a lot of pressure on here, as you clamp this in, it sucks this ring back and it's actually part of the vice clamping mechanism. So when you hold this tight, if I tighten this handle, it tightens up right in here and it locks it down so there's no backlash here. So if you loosen this just a little bit, you can actually rotate it 
And the workpiece is still tight in here. So you can snug up your workpiece, still rotate the vise, and it's already getting tighter. So I gotta loosen off a little, and then finish clamping. What I love about this is if you really want to clamp something tight, I mean, you can't expect this little detent knob to do the full job of locking this thing down. Because let's say you had a big bar in your pipe vise and you're reefing on this bar, and that one little detent is supposed to prevent this rotation. That's a lot to ask of this little pin. But when you crank down tight on a, on a, uh, a piece of stock, and now I'm going to pull the detent all the way out, I still can't rotate it because the clamping mechanism of the vise contributes to the locking of the horizontal pivot. So, it's a lot of information very quickly, but I tell you, it's hard to find a vise in good shape. I wanted a straight handle, uh, I wanted pressed ends, I wanted the pipe jaws, and they're removable. All you do is loosen off this Allen. Uh, key and you can remove these jaws. There's different jaws you can put in or if they wear out you can replace them I'll never wear this thing out ever ever um, I wanted the horizontal pivot. I wanted The 360 degree pivot. I wanted a good quality vice not a uh, Let's say an offshore special Quality casting and here's another thing when you look at the the dimpling on the casting Maybe I can get you up nice and close when you're looking for a vise, what you want to see is a very even texture. This is not a fancy paint job. This is how you know you've got a good casting. If you see some really smooth areas, it's probably because there was a void in the casting. They filled it with body filler, sanded it, and painted it to make it look pretty. Um, the smoother and prettier this looks, the worse your casting most likely is. Now, almost any casting can have a void in it, and you can see right here, it looks to me like they did a little bit of touch up there. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but regardless, I am very happy with this vise. I probably paid a little too much for it, but I've been looking for such a long time. I didn't want to let this one slip through my fingers. If you bought a brand new vise like this, depending mm -hmm. on the brand, the brand has an awful lot to do with, uh, with how much you're going to pay for a new one. If you bought a brand new record vice like this, and there's a few other brands, I'm not that familiar with the European ones, you could pay five or six hundred dollars. You could pay more, especially if it's a calibrated vice for machining and milling. If you go to a shop like Harbor Freight or Princess Auto, which we have here in Manitoba in Canada, uh, you can get a cheaper version and a four inch version for like 169, 179 bucks. This is a real quality vice. I paid 180. Now this one has a couple of things that the cheaper ones don't have. It has this extra set of jaws on the bottom. It has the detents and it has the 360 degree swivel and it's a five inch. I don't think you would buy this thing brand new for under four to $500. I could be wrong at 180. I don't think I overpaid grossly as a used machine, especially since it's hardly been used. So I'm actually quite pleased with it. Um, Thanks for watching. I hope this information was somewhat interesting and helpful. And uh, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks. Have a great evening. Uh -huh.